Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to another inspiring edition of Inspirational Africans, where we bring to you Africans who are changing the continent through their works. Today, we are excited to have a young, dynamic academic with us who has contributed greatly in his field of expertise. Let us see who our guest for today is. Featuring today on Inspirational Africans, we bring you the story and works of an African researcher who is committed to the eradication of diseases in Africa and the world at large. And he is Professor Dr. Gordon Awandari. Professor Gordon Awandari is the director of West African Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens of the University of Ghana, Legon. He is also the senior lecturer and head of Department of Biochemistry Cell and Molecular Biology, University of Ghana. Aside his research and lecturing profession, he has also served in many capacities as the following. Member, Search Committee for Chief Executive Officer of Food and Drugs Authority, Ghana. Member of the Ghana Biomedical Convention Board since August 2014. Member of Biological Sciences Management Committee of the University of Ghana. Member, Management Committee at the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research, University of Ghana, Legon. Member, Scientific and Technical Committee since December 2012. Member, Faculty of Science Board, August 2011 to July 2014, University of Ghana, Legon. Member, Steering Committee since August 2012, Cambridge Africa Partnership for Research Excellence. Capricks, University of Cambridge, UK. Member, Management Committee for the Center of International Affairs and Diplomacy, University of Ghana, Legon. External Examiner, Faculty of Applied Sciences, University of Development Studies, Navrongo, Ghana. Department of Biochemistry and Microbiology, University of Fort Ha, South Africa. Department of Virology, University of Limpopo, Medusa Campus, Pretoria, South Africa, Workshop Coordinator since August 2011, American Society for Cell Biology, West African Regional Workshops on Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens. He also mentored and inspired over 30 undergraduate students, 7 MPhil students, and 7 PhD students. Among his major professional achievements are as follows. The leading role in research that led to the discovery of complement receptor 1 as a red cell invasion receptor for Plasmodium falciparum in 2010. Founded the West African Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens for Biomedical Research Capacity Building at the University of Ghana and led the proposal that won a World Bank African Centers for Excellence grant in 2013. By dint of his hard work, he was awarded the outstanding student for the best dissertation in graduating group at the University of Pittsburgh Graduate School of Public Health, April 2008. Distinguished Award for Meritorious Service 2013 at the University of Ghana, July 2014. Award for Promotion of Biomedical Science in Ghana, Ghana Biomedical Convention in July 2014 and the 2015 Royal Society Pfizer Early Career Award for Achievements in Molecular and Cellular Studies of Malaria, October 2015. As an advocate, he has been able to win grants for the promotion of biomedical research and prevention of infectious diseases from the World Bank, Wellcome Trust of the UK, Leverhulm Royal Society, UK, National Institutes of Health, NIAID, USA and the European Research Council. Please stay tuned and be inspired. Well, viewers, it's time to meet the doctor himself, Dr. Gordon A. Awandare. Doc, welcome to Inspirational Africans. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, we've had your introduction, we had a lot of technical jargons, immunologists, research scientists. Can you tell us in exactly your own words what you do? Yes, yeah, so uh, I'm a teacher, first of all, I teach biochemistry. I'm the head of the Department of Biochemistry at the University of Ghana. Um, but as a teacher, we also do research. Okay. And my research interest is in malaria and the biology of the 
the parasite that causes mm -hmm. the disease, as well as the disease mechanism okay. uh, in children. So uh, we mainly look at how the parasite enters our cells okay. and how that process can be exploited to stop the parasite. Okay. And then uh, further on, we look at how our, our immune system or our body's defense, uh, how it responds to the infection by the parasite. And uh, that is what we call the immunology. Okay. So yeah. do you foresee a time where, just like how we vaccinate ourselves against diseases like polio, we can vaccinate ourselves against malaria? Yes, that's the hope. That's, that's why we are in this business, okay. is trying to find a vaccine. Because as much as we've made a lot of uh, uh, you know, progress in reducing the disease, the, the best way to actually prevent it is to have a vaccine, Absolutely. Uh, just like we have for polio and uh, you know, other, diseases. other common infectious diseases. So um, what we are hoping is that in the next, uh, uh, you know, probably five to ten years, we'll be able to have a vaccine for malaria that will work. In fact, uh, right now there's a vaccine that uh, they are about to to put uh, to deploy in a in a in a uh, in a limited manner in certain areas to try it. Um, the protection is not as high as we would like, but at least it's, uh, it's a place to start. So, so technically, there's a vaccine. It's just that it's not uh, as it's potent. It's like the beginning stages. Like, yeah, what yeah. role is the Department of Biochemistry playing in that global, you know, effort to bring about, you know, some kind of an immunization against malaria? Well, um, we are doing research and training. So the research <coughs> is like I was describing. Um, we are doing it at two main levels that impact vaccine okay. uh, research. Is that we are studying the parasite in the field. So um, our colleagues in the US and the UK, they mostly study the parasites that we call laboratory parasites. That means they keep them in the lab and they grow them and they study them. But because we live in Ghana where malaria is endemic, okay. we have the opportunity to um, actually get parasites from people who are sick that we call field isolates or clinical isolates. Uh, and these are the parasites that are actually causing disease. The parasite changes a lot. So if you have a parasite in the lab for a long time, okay. it may be different from the one that is now causing okay, disease okay. because okay. the one that is in the field causing disease keeps uh, changing. So we think that uh, we need to keep track of what is causing disease in the field, in the, in the hospitals. Um, so we have been studying the parasite in the field, and that provides some context for the research into vaccine development because if you are designing a vaccine, if it works against laboratory parasites and it doesn't work against the clinical parasites that are actually causing the disease, no, then you haven't, you haven't made much, yeah, okay. exactly, you haven't made much, much progress. So we are uh, setting up a system where we are able to test any vaccine that um, the that um, you know, others have come up with, or we ourselves have come up with, see what it works in field isolates, what it can prevent the growth of the parasite that we find in, in children, in, in, uh, in other sick, uh, other people who have malaria in, in Ghana. So that's one way. The, the second way is doing the training. Okay. So we have a big program here. I'm leading a center called the West African Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens, WACBIP. And uh, the WACBIP program, is aimed at training young scientists. So if you want to fight any disease, you need the, the human, uh, you know, you need the, the, the human power because you need the personnel and the, the technical uh, know-how to be able to, to fight any disease because, um, you know, all the new interventions are based on, uh, you know, research and you need to build a research base. To do so, that, that. Yes, so that's what we are doing, the second part of uh, what we're doing is uh, actually training people. So we have so many people at master's level, PhD level, and postdoctoral level, and we're training them on infectious disease in general, but malaria is a big part of that. Yeah. Um, one of the things you're credited with is to help, uh, helping in creating, um, is it an instrument or a system for, for describing, I forget the technical, you know, <laughs> but it was somewhere in the profile. Yeah. Yes, I don't know if you can tell us about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So one of the things is in relation to the, the, the way the parasites enter our red cells. Okay. Um, 
some of the work that we have done, we identified a molecule that had not previously been known to be involved in that process of okay. the parasite entering the, uh, the red cells. Okay. So um, it's called complement receptor 1, okay. called CR1. It has its normal role, but then we found that the parasite actually uses this uh, protein okay. to invade our red cells. Okay. And that was uh, uh, you know, one of the major discoveries uh, in malaria research. Okay. So we were part of that effort. So that's, uh, that's probably what well, you're talking about. Congratulations, and uh, yeah. pardon my lack of scientific <laughs> argument. Yeah. But so let's, let's zoom it down to your life now. I yeah. mean, now we can say you are a malaria soldier, hopefully, and <laughs> yes. you'd be able to find the, the, that immune, the vaccine that we need. But before you got into all these and doing all of this great scientific work, tell us when you started growing up, was science very important to you in primary school when you started schooling? Actually, not that much. <laughs> In growing up, um, I, I was uh, more, uh, you know, in tune with, you know, the fun things of life okay. and, uh, you know, uh, I didn't really think about science until I got to secondary school. Okay. You, went for, you went for a primary school in the Upper East? Yes. So yes. I, I went to school in the Upper East mostly. Okay. Um, primary school, I started off at, uh, in Boku, okay. in a primary school in Boku called Akanda primary school or Kanda Preparatory School. Okay. Uh, at the time my father was uh, was teaching at the Boku Secondary School. Okay. And then um, when my father left Boku and moved to Borga, then I continued in Borga. I initially hopped around a few primary schools, okay. but then I ended up at the Presbyterian Primary School in Borga. Okay. And that's where I, I did up to uh, class six. Okay. And then from there I went to Notre Dame, okay. Notre Dame, <coughs> Minor seminary in okay. Abrongo, which is a Catholic school. Yeah. Um, that's where I did my O levels. Okay. Then I came to Presec Legon. Okay. Uh, and then that's where I did my A levels. So when you doing so, at what point did your interest in science, I mean, ignite? In secondary school. In secondary in, school. In Notre, Notre Dame. Dame. Okay. Yes, in Notre Dame. That's when we started being exposed to science. Okay. And uh, that's when I found that. Uh, you know, science was the most interesting thing for me. Okay. And, you know, the other subjects in arts and business, they, they didn't seem... What did you, know, you find exciting or interesting about science? Because I think at the time, um, I thought that uh, any time we had, ex you know, experiments, when we went to the lab and they okay. performed experiments, it was just intriguing to me. Okay. It's, it's, it was something that seemed like uh, there was more to learn about okay. than, you know, just defining what uh, but, demand and supply are. <laughs> what, ca like what kind of experiments were we doing back in the second oh, those, those, those Dissecting days, frogs? <laughs> those days, you know, doing titrations okay. and, you know, looking at uh, acids, okay. neutralizing bases and vice versa and, you know, forming salts and okay. things like that. It, it was just it was, fascinating okay. to me. For those of us who are arts students, we're always, you know, making fun of the fact that if we used to write our science practicals as theory exams. So you go into the examination and they, they identify what equipment this is and how do you, uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, yes. So it was always interesting to us. So fast forward, so, so you moved from Notre Dame and you came down to the south, so yes. um, Presec. Yes. I how was to... that transition for you? It was quite, uh, it was quite, uh, you know, it was quite different. Okay. Uh, because before then I hadn't traveled to Accra before. Okay. Um, I think the furthest I'd gone was probably Tamale. Okay. From oh, the wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so before I finished my okay. O level, I'd never been to Accra. So it was my first time coming to Accra and my parents lived in the north. Okay. So I had to come and live with my aunt. Okay. Uh, my aunt uh, who was working at the Ghana Education Service at the okay. time. And she took me to her home with her daughters, and we stayed together. Those times were living in Laboni. Okay. Uh, but it was a big shift, you know, living, growing up in Borga and then coming to Accra. Okay. It was quite, uh, you know, what, what were some adjustment. of the what, what were some of the things you had to adjust or some of the things that immediately, um, you know? First thing was that I didn't have a lot of my friends here okay. because uh, most of my friends were over there. And then secondly, I found that um, people were not as friendly in Accra as they were in Borga. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, it, was, it, it took an adjustment. And, okay. you know, when you get to school, um, there's, no, there's no mercy for the, uh, you know, 
the, the newcomer. So, okay. you know, life was quite fast. So I had to adjust mm -hmm. quickly to okay. be in a new environment and doing things differently. And, uh, you know, there were times that uh, I felt discouraged. But, you know, after a few months, I... So we know the typical image of science students, you know, always serious, always buried in their books. Were you that typical, uh, typical science student? No, 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 no. no. When, when I was in the university, I had a lot of fun. I think it was the most fun time in my life okay. when I was doing my undergrad. So even though we were science students, we, we still made time to So you were in like always straight life. jacket, library, uh, lecture hall, library, <laughs> lecture no, hall. In fact, I hardly went to the library. Okay. Um, what I made sure that I did was to go to class. Okay. I never missed classes. Um, even if I went out the night before with my friends and came back at dawn, I would wake up and go to a 7.30 class and things okay. like that. So I made sure I always went to class because, okay. as I just told you, I found that uh, in the university, the same lecturer teaches you, the same lecturer sets the exam questions, and the same lecturer marks the exam okay. questions. So I've, I found that going to class and listening to the, the lecturer was very useful in passing the exams. So I always made sure I went to class. But after classes, then, you know, that's okay. when we get to hang out and have fun. And At what <clears throat> time did you start to contemplate an academic career? Um, I would say after my first degree. Okay. After my first degree, um, I was selected to be a TA okay. uh, in the department to to, for my national service. Okay, which department? This is the same, this okay. same department. Biochemistry. Biochemistry, okay. yeah. So, um, because of that experience of being a TA and teaching and doing a little bit of research at the time, at the time I was work, uh, working with uh, Professor Marian Ramadi. Okay. She had a project on which I was working. So, um, that was what drew me into academia, you know being selected to do the service. And I found that it was uh, something that I could relate to. Um, I liked teaching, and uh, I liked to read and learn new things. Okay. And I, I, I felt that uh, being in academia was uh, was. Uh, so you did your master's in, in the University of Ghana? I did my master's in the University. So after my national service, okay. I enrolled in the master's program in the same department, okay. Department of Biochemistry. And I, I did my master's in for okay. two years here in the department, yes. Then after your master's? And after my master's, I actually worked at Noguchi. Noguchi for about... That's Noguchi, the famous research institute in Accra. Right here on yeah, campus. Right here. It's, in the, it's part of the University of Ghana. Some people forget that. Yeah. Yeah, so Noguchi is actually just a, an institute within the University of Ghana. So I, I worked there um, for about a year and then I was invited to join the department okay. as a lecturer. Okay. So at the time, the, the lecturer who was teaching immunology was going on retirement. Okay. And they needed to find someone to replace them. And I was honored to be invited to apply for the position of lecturer to replace uh, one of the you know, top lecturers that we had, okay. uh, Professor John, who was going on retirement. So I applied and I went through the process of the interview and, okay. and then I, I, I got appointed in uh, 2002. As a lecturer? December 2002 as a lecturer, yeah. Okay. So <coughs> I, I was at, I'm sure you were in your late 20s or early 30s? Um, 2002, I was uh, 28. Okay. So at the young age of 28, you started your teaching career here yeah. in the university. Yes. Then at some point, I know you went out of the country to do your PhD. Yes. So I basically, uh, when I started, when I was appointed lecturer, I, I did it for just one year. Okay. And then I got uh, an opportunity to study at the University of Pittsburgh for okay. my PhD. Okay. So I left in 2003, okay. in August 2003 to do my PhD in the University of Pittsburgh. Okay. Yes. In the US? In the US, in okay. Pennsylvania, yes. So I was uh, in Pittsburgh from 2003 to 2007. Okay. Uh, and I did PhD in infectious diseases. Okay. Um, then after that, I did what, what we call a postdoc, which is like uh, uh, additional training you get after your PhD. Okay. I did that uh, with the Walter Reed Army Research Institute in uh, in Maryland. Okay. So uh, this is one of the U.S. military uh, research 
okay. installations. And okay. I, I, work, I worked there for three years, from 2007 to 2010. All this time that you were working, studying and working in the U.S., was it always a uh, thing in your agenda that I'm going to come back and teach? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. All, all that I was doing in the U.S., okay. I was preparing myself okay. to come back here and, and contribute. Okay. So, yes. And that whole time I was in, in uh, contact with the department. Okay. And uh, we, we, were, we were always planning how best I can position myself to come back and help the department. So, okay. yes, so all the time that I was there, it was, it was to acquire the skills that I needed to be able to succeed when I get back here. At what point was your interest in malaria ignited? During my master's. Okay. So, um, when I started doing my master's uh, at the department, uh, we, we had to look for projects okay. for our research. And um, there was a project at Noguchi uh, where they were doing, uh, uh, you know, malaria work in children. Okay. And uh, they advertised for students to work on the project. And I applied to that and I was selected as okay. one so of the two students. So from your master's level, your interest is in malaria started Absolutely. your research? Once I started doing PhD. yes okay. once i started working on malaria for my masters i stayed on malaria up to today so, so. you finish you, you work in the you study in the u.s you work in the u.s you, US, you come back to ghana to the department of biochemistry and we learned that you've been very instrumental in you know attracting funding to the department to stock yeah. its you know facilities can you tell us about your work with the department since you came back yes so um actually when i came back um Came back in 2010, okay. and uh, what you know, what I realized was that we had to, you know, be aggressive in trying to find funds okay. to support the department because uh, there there was basically very little in terms of equipment okay. to do modern science and. Uh, given what I was used to doing okay. in the U.S. and you know the, the resources that I had available to me, I realized that there was you know it was an unsustainable situation to be in as a department. So um, I dedicated most of my time to writing grants, okay. writing applications for grants, and uh, I I got some grants, uh, smaller grants, if the first few years, and then. Um, uh, in the last few years, then we started to get bigger grants. So the way funding for research goes is uh, you get small amounts of money to work, and when you are able to demonstrate that you can use small amounts of money yeah, effectively yeah. and produce results and account for it properly and not uh, be dishonest about it, then it opens more opportunities to get okay. bigger amounts of money. So I basically went from, you know, not having grants, writing so many applications, starting to get small grants, and then um, that escalated very quickly. And now we have one of the best uh, funded programs in the university. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, we've, we've shown that we can use resources properly. As our listeners heard, it's, we said that you've been able to attract about $17 million in terms of, yeah. Yes, so grants that I've, uh, I've led in the university uh, since I've been back, um, yeah, it's about and, $17 million in, in, in uh, grants that we've And this won. is going into providing infrastructure Absolutely. in terms of uh, laboratory infrastructure and yes. training other people to... Yes, so that's, uh, most of the money is going to buy equipment, Okay. you know, several millions of dollars we are using to buy equipment. Equipment that we, we would never have been able to get, get. Okay. from the university's own resources. Okay. And then uh, a big part is also going to giving scholarships to okay. students, PhD students, master's students. Um, many people who would not have been able to afford a master's education or a PhD education, we are able to support them through some of the funding that we got. And uh, you know, this is this is exactly what uh, we should be doing as as a developing country is to train scientists. You know, we talk a lot about it, but we don't actually put money into it. Okay. So we need to uh, you know start to put some resources into into it. Uh, no country has developed without, without. 
science and research. So we, we have to be serious about it. And so, so now you're the head of department yeah. at here, here at the biochemistry department. What is the vision? What other plans do you have for this department and indeed for the country and the continent? <laughs> The country is too big for me. <laughs> well, you're working with I'll stay, I'll stay with yeah. the department, yeah. yeah. So, you know, um, I think we are on a good path. Um, we, are, we are training people. We are doing research. And we want to excel in that department. We want to uh, produce research that can be used to better the health of the people. So all the work that we do is trying to you know, find solutions to health problems and to build capacity for further research. So train young people so they can replace some of us when we, when we are retired. And, you know, that's, that's the only way we can, we can move forward. And we think that uh, the impact that we are having would go, you know, beyond just the University of Ghana because we have partners in several African countries. Um, and some of our trainees are in Mali, Gambia, Kenya, South Africa, you know, and other places. And the, the training that we're giving them here, we're hoping that, you know, they can also become leaders in their own environments and start to uh, also do well and do research and, uh, you know, carry the, the effort further. So for you, it will pretty much be a life of academia? That's or how I see it now. Okay. Um, maybe that will change in a, in a few <laughs> years, but... Uh, as I said, I, as far as I can see, it's, uh, you know, it's all about doing research, training people, you know, being in the university environment. In, in wrapping up our interview, yeah. we just want to know a bit. So do you have a family life? Oh, yes, yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. So I have a, a, you know, a beautiful wife, okay. Massa, and I have three children. Okay. Any of them Marie. starting to show interest in science? <laughs> <laughs> um, How old I have is two your... daughters, Marie, who's 10, okay. uh, Gabrielle, who's okay. 6, just turned 6 yesterday, actually, okay. and uh, uh, Jeremy, okay. who's my boy, who's 2 okay. years. Yeah, so, uh, um, so far, I think both of them, I mean, all the, the, the two of them were in school, mm -hmm. the girls. Uh, both of them seem to be interested in science. None of them have actually told me they want to be scientists, okay. but <laughs> but uh, it's, it seems like they enjoy science. Marie, uh, you know, is currently learning about uh, friction and okay. light and okay. you know magnets and things like that, and she she seems to enjoy it because uh, it's very practical. She can take a magnet and put it on the fridge right. and you know have a stick, and you know it's interesting for them. So. We'll see what they develop into. No, um, no pressure. They, they, can, <laughs> they can be whatever they want. Taking a look at your life, you know, throughout the years, all the way from Upper East region of Ghana, coming all the way down to the south to study, going to the U.S., coming back to contribute to the University of Ghana. What are some of the values that have helped you so far, you know, and what, what role does faith play in, in your life? Yeah, so um, in terms of values, I think work ethic. Uh, one of the, the best things I learned from the U.S. is work ethic. Okay. And that's something that I try to uh, inculcate in our students, that okay. you take your work seriously, and everything you do, you try to do it to the best of your ability. Okay. You know, trying to just do enough is not enough. Okay. In order to be successful, especially coming from where we come from, you have to always do a little extra. You have to always do a little more than the average person. So that's, that's something that um, I've learned to do. And I try to teach that to all my students. Okay. And you have to be persistent. Um, even in the work we do, writing grants, you know, I had to write about 10 grants before I got one. Okay. You know, so you have to keep trying, and you cannot give up. And uh, uh, those are the values. In terms of faith, yeah, I, you know, all the good things that come to me, I, I know that uh, there's a God out there. Um, to be successful, you, you cannot just be good. You have to be lucky. And I think the luck comes from the blessings that you get from, from God. So that um, God puts you in positions at the right time to take advantage of opportunities. So I think that uh, that's what has happened to me throughout my life is that... Um, Every step of the way, there's always an opportunity waiting for me. 
Um, whenever I don't know what to do, I just, I just wait and keep working hard and then something always opens up and then I take the next step. So um, I think uh, that's how my faith uh, has, uh, has guided me, is to believe that God will always show me where to go. He's leading me to what I'm doing, so he's always giving me the direction you know, as to what to do next. I mean, Doc, I know that you have been uh, very much awarded for all the work you've done. Can you share with us some of the honors you have received, maybe some of the very important ones? Yeah. Um, yes, they, I think the, 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 the most important one that I got is the Pfizer Award. That is the most pre prestigious award that I have. Um, that's the Royal Society Pfizer Award for, for the, uh, you know, the, the scientists an African scientist making the biggest impact, and um, I got that for 2015. Okay. And I think uh, that's, what, that's one of the most significant awards that I got. Um, in addition to that, I have been um, awarded by the university. Okay. Uh, I was given the Meritorious Service Award, okay. uh, you know, Distinguished Award for Meritorious Service in 2014. Um, I shared that with a friend of mine called Professor Dankwa. And uh, I think that was also a big thing that the university recognizes that uh, we are making some efforts uh, to work for the university. So those were two of the, the most recent and most significant awards. Uh, in addition to that, a lot of the grants that we got, uh, um, they are prestigious grants. Um, the World Bank African Centers of Excellence grant, it's a prestigious grant that brought $8 million to the University of Ghana. And then recently the uh, Wacom Trust Deltas grant, which was you know, very competitive. You know, over 160 different scientists within Africa applied for that. And they awarded seven, seven of them. And we were one of the seven to be awarded. And that brought another $8 million to the University of Ghana. So, well, Doc, uh, thank you very much for sharing your inspiring story with us here yeah. on Inspirational Africans. And uh, we wish you all the best. We wish that you continue to be a great source of inspiration and change for our community and that the work that you're doing and the people that you're training will all be in the benefit of humanity. Thank you. Thank Dr. you so much. Gordon it's my a. pleasure. Awandare. It's my pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. So viewers, thank you very much for joining us on another exciting edition of Inspirational Africans. We hope that you have at least learned something from the story that we shared with you. Join us again for another inspiring episode. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.